If somebody were to ask you what's in your tank, I would be willing to bet that you can rattle off a list of all of the fish and the coral and even a lot of your cleanup crew. But what about all the small guys? I'd be willing to bet that they often get left out of any of those lists that you're sharing with people and telling them on things that you have in your tank. So out of respect to all the small guys, this video is gonna be dedicated to them. there, Hillary here for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Like I mentioned, I'm dedicating this video to all of the small boys that are hanging out in your tank that often get overlooked. We're going to go through a list of 10 really interesting small species that you might miss. First things first that you can't see with the naked eye are those microbes and bacteria that are hanging out in our tanks. Now, obviously you can't see them because you need a microscope. However, they play a crucial role in our tank. From helping to cycle our tank to breaking down nutrients, these are here for you and are just such a huge part of your tank, even though you can't see them. So don't forget about all the hard work that they do. The second group of small critters that are in your tank are pods. Now, I'm not specifically just talking about copepods, I'm also talking about amphipods. I'd be willing to bet that amphipods are usually the ones that you're able to see those large copepod-like critters that are moving around. I usually see them in my filter socks or on the rock work at night, but also those copepod species that you intentionally add to your tank, like those tigger pods, those apex pods, tisbe pods, any of those species that you're intentionally adding to the tank, whether it be to help with algae cleanup or as food for some of your fish. Don't ever forget about those guys just because you can't can't see them. Now, if you are looking to spot those copepods that are in your tank, you can see them if you look at that glass at just the right angle. And a lot of times if you look at them in the early morning or in the evening when the lights are down, sometimes you can spot them moving around. The third group of critters that you should not forget just because they're small are all of those baby invertebrates. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm talking about any of those shrimp that are reproducing and having babies in the tank. It's hard to see them a lot of times, but if you look closely, you can see them moving around. Snails that leave their egg masses along the glass are another one that's pretty easy to spot. And even some of those baby sea urchins that might reproduce in your tank, they are adorable and they're always hard at work keeping your tank clean. Another group of small critters in your tank are all of those baby teleosts that are in your tank. So I'm talking about fish babies. Clownfish are ones that commonly will be laying eggs in your tank, but they're not the only egg layers that we have in our systems. A lot of damselfish will also lay eggs in the tanks, but don't even forget about ones like cardinal fish. So lots of potential for baby fish and baby invertebrates in your tank. The fifth group of small critters that are on my list today are marine tube worms. Now I'm sure you're familiar with those feather duster worms that are fairly decent sized, but there's a lot of other smaller marine worms that make tubes that might come in on live rock. And they're just as fascinating to watch, even if they don't have those bright pink and white colors like the feather duster worms. So keep an eye out for them. Tube worms aren't the only ones that tend to get overlooked when it comes to the small creatures in our tank. Spaghetti worms are another one that are a sign of a good, healthy, thriving system. Spaghetti worms might look like they're a bad thing because of the way they kind of come up out of the sand and the rock work, but they're really good at helping to break down and remove waste from food and fish and really great part of the cleanup crew. So if you see them in your tank, that's always a good sign. The seventh species on my list is a nudibranch. So I'm specifically thinking about the Bergia. Now these guys are going to cruise along your reef tank. You might not see them, but they will help you to get rid of pests like Aptasia. They are a great resource. Again, another part of your cleanup crew helping you to do the dirty work that you don't have time, that you're not able, and that's a little bit tricky to get into those hard spots. 
Now, another species that might be considered or might look like a nudibranch, and that is a stomatella. This is another um, sea slug-like creature. A lot of times you're going to find them in your sumps or in dark areas. They're a great part of the cleanup crew. They're going to help to remove nuisance algae, but it kind of looks like a sea slug with a hard shell on top. If you see them in your tank, don't be scared. They're actually a really good sign of a healthy, thriving ecosystem. So shout out to all those little stomatellas that are putting in the hard work in your tank. All right, we're moving towards the end of this list. Number nine are sponges. There's a lot of different sponges that pop up in our tanks, and I'll be honest, I'm by no means an expert, but I can tell you where they are. A lot of times they are white in color. Sometimes you'll see them that are like blue or even yellow, but most of the ones that I tend to see are white. Now, one that's really easy to spot and identify are pineapple sponges. They actually have this shape of a pineapple and they're white with little almost fronds hanging out on the top. These are another great tool to help keep your aquarium clean. They're gonna filter the water and help to remove some of those nutrients out of the water. So don't be alarmed if you happen to spot some of those pineapple sponges in your tank. All right, last but not least, number 10 on my list is one that most people consider a pest and a nuisance, and that is bristleworms. I've included them on this list because you don't always see them. A lot of times they're hiding in the rockwork or in the cracks and crevices of your tank. You don't see them until it's food time or even at night, but they tend to be fairly small, especially when they start out. No one introduces these into their tank intentionally. And so a lot of times when they come in, they come in in a much smaller form than we often see them. But as long as you don't have an overabundance of bristle worms in your tank, I like to consider them a helpful part of a good cleanup crew. All right, that's gonna conclude my list of 10 small critters that you might find in your reef tank, but I'd love to know, have you seen any of these in your tank? If so, leave a comment, let us know which ones you've seen and which ones you maybe want to attract to your tank. All right, this has been Hillary for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.